Now in the first of my key verses there, We'll see that God, he referred to the men of Israel as a worm. God, he said, fear not, you worm Jacob. That's a rather interesting choice of words that, that the Lord is using there, isn't it? I said, that's an interesting choice of words that God is using there, isn't it? Fear not, you worm Jacob. Seems like a, a rather harsh thing for the Lord to say there, doesn't it? I said, it seems like a rather harsh thing for the Lord to say there, doesn't it? Not only does God refer to Israel as a worm, but he calls them Jacob, I want to point out there. So, so what is with God, what is with him using this choice of, of language, this, this verbiage here, these, these words that he's using here in the first of my key verses for today? I will tell you all that it's actually very fitting for the Lord to be using this language to describe Israel at that period of time for a couple of reasons, actually. The first reason I, I want to consider Jacob. Jacob, who, by the way, was a wormy person. Jacob, I want you to remember here, Jacob, he was a known schemer, a trickster. Jacob, he got Esau to give up his birthright. And, and that wasn't enough for him. Jacob, he later on in his life, he, he, trick up, he tricked his dad, he tricked Isaac into giving him the blessing which would have gone to Esau. Like I said, he was a, he was a wormy person. The men of Israel, they had acted against God. They were wormy. During that period of time, you see the Northern tribes of Israel, they have forsook the Lord, which led them to living in sin, which led to them being conquered by the Assyrians. The Southern tribes, the Southern kingdom of Judah, the Benjamin, the Levites that had come down from the North as well. They, while having a mix of good and wicked Kings, they eventually like the Northern kingdom, they forsook the Lord as well, and they lived wickedly. And because they forsook the Lord, we know that they were conquered by the Babylonians. We know that they were exiled from the land of Judea, from Jerusalem. They lived in exile in Babylon. So again, they acted against God. They were wormy. They were worms. Second, the second reason here, I, I want us to take into consideration the worm itself. Worms are hardly ever thought of unless one is going fishing and they need to get some fishing bait and they don't feel like running out to the store and buying fishing bait. Anybody can reach into the ground and, and pull up worms. You know, every now and then I can say that I'm a gardener now officially. Every now and then you may see one, you may see a worm, in, in the garden as well. But other than that, worms, they aren't really thought of, are they? Worms aren't seen. They aren't thought of. Worms are, for most folks, irrelevant. They are trampled upon in more ways than one. They are, again, irrelevant creatures. So Israel, they had become irrelevant at that period of time, though they were never meant to be irrelevant. Israel, they were meant to be to God, a kingdom of priests. If they chose to live in obedience to his law, if they chose to keep his covenant, but the books of Jeremiah and Lamentations, they again show us the outcome of their forsaking the Lord. In the books of Jeremiah and the books of Le Lamentations, we see just how rough this period of time was for the Jews when, when they were living in exile in Babylon. We have also seen it in the book of Daniel as well, how the Jews, how they were mocked and, and how they were treated. How again, Nebuchadnezzar, how he tried to force his way of sin onto them. 
Now, this begs the question for all of us living in the world today. Are we any different than Israel was at that period of time? This begs the question, are we as a lowly worm? Some of us, we might think that we are the greatest thing since sliced bread. Some of us, we are so prideful to think that we are God's gift to the world. Yes, we are God's creation, but we mankind today, I tell you that we are a creation that has forsook God. We are a creation that in forsaking God, we have turned to live disobediently. They find for Harry. We are a creation that has turned to sin. So are we truly the greatest thing since sliced bread? Or are we as a lowly worm? You see, rather than lifting each other up, man still has the desire to lord over one another thinking and believing himself to be a God when he is nothing as a lowly worm. Rather than lifting each other up, man still tramples over one another out of greed, out of lust, out of covetousness, out of jealousy, out of selfish ambition. And we again think ourselves to be the greatest thing since my mama's chocolate cake and my mom's sweet potato pie. We think that we are something when we are a lowly worm in the eyes of God. Rather than helping each other up, rather than lifting each other up, man, we still enslave. Man, we still suppress. Man, we still oppress. Man, we still try to keep each other from prospering. How can we be so great when we choose to keep each other down? I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, simply put, in more ways than one, we are wormy people. We are as worms. Now, let's notice there in the first of my key verses there. Let's notice there in my key verses, which is, again, 14, 15 verse there. Let's notice that to Israel, God, their redeemer, he promised there to help them. Even though, again, God had called them worms. God, he promised to help them. God, he promised to do for them as he had done, as he had did for Jacob. You see, God, he chose Jacob. God, he named and he made Jacob Israel. God, I want you to understand today, he lifted up Jacob from being a wormy person. He lifted him up from being a, a schemer and being a trickster. He named him Israel and Jacob, he became God's servant. Now, Israel's children, they were the descendants of Abraham, a man who God will see there in scripture there, a man who God called his friend. Now, the Lord, our God, I want you to understand today, God, he desired to enjoy the same bond and fellowship with, with the men of Israel as he had enjoyed with Abraham. Abraham, we again, we should remember he became the father of many nations and through Abraham, the world was saved. Such blessings is what God had in mind for Israel. And so with all of that in mind, I, again, I turn the focus on us. What about us? What does God have in mind for us what does God have in mind for you? Does he share the same thoughts towards us as he shared toward Israel back in the day? The lowly, I would say today, I don't know if you all will agree with me on this, but I look around 
I see myself as being lowly, and, and I know that I need it, but I see today that the lowly is in terrible need of help in this world. I, again, I don't know if you will agree with me on that, but I truly do believe that the lowly is in need of help in our world today. Will God help us? Will the Lord help us or will he abandon us? Does God love us? Does God care about us? Or will he leave? Will he forsaken us? Has he already left us to suffer? Has he already left us to be defeated in this world by the wicked and by the evil? What do you all think today? To answer that question, I would ask another question. Well, didn't he give us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? Did he, Jesus Christ, only help the Jews? Or did Jesus help everybody? You see, a Gentile woman once came to Jesus about her demon-possessed daughter, and, and she cried out to Jesus for help. And Jesus, he told his disciples, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Just trying to see if this woman, this Gentile woman, would she back away. But the Gentile woman, she insisted, and she showed Jesus great faith. To which Jesus, he marveled at her faith. And instantly in that moment, her faith had healed her daughter. Again, a Gentile woman. Was that just a one-time occasion for Jesus? Helping someone who is not a Jew? Who is not of the blood of Israel? Was that only a one-time moment? Or again... Does Jesus, does he truly do care and love everybody? This is something that we need to know today. Because again, I believe that we, the lowly, that we are in need of help today. And we need to know whether or not God cares about us. Because there are many living in the world today who truly do believe that God has abandoned them to the wicked and to the evil in the world today. Now, when Jesus spoke about being the good shepherd, Jesus, he stated, other sheep I have which are not of this fold. The other sheep being the Gentiles, the fold that he was speaking to being the Jews. Again, Jesus, he said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them, Jesus said, also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, Jesus said. And Jesus said that there will be one shepherd over the flock, with him being the shepherd over that one flock made up of Jews and Gentiles. That means everybody, all people. Yes, Jesus, he came to the Jews first, but I tell you today, in no way did Jesus ever intend on leaving anybody behind in this world. I won't get no amens on that, huh? Whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, God, he desires to enjoy the same bond, the same friendship, the same fellowship as he enjoyed with Abraham, he desires to enjoy it with you. But, but do, you do you desire to enjoy a bond, a friendship, a fellowship, a relationship with the Lord? Do you understand today what it means to be a friend of Jesus? Do you understand today what it means to be a friend of the Lord? In case you don't, Jesus, I tell you today that he promised not to leave his friends as orphans. Jesus, he promised to give them another helper. That other helper being the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we should remember, the Holy Spirit abides with all of those who love the Lord, all of those who 
keep God's commandments. The work of the Holy Spirit, we should remember, is a work to transform the friends of Jesus, to transform the friends of Christ through the renewing of their mind. And because I believe that we are a friend of Jesus, I would say our mind. The Holy Spirit work is to transform us through the renewing of our mind, our heart, to be just like Jesus. Do you desire to be like him today? Or do you desire to remain a lowly worm in this world? Do you understand how wonderful? Do you understand how powerful it is for God to always be with you as a friend? Do you understand today how wonderful it is to have a friend in Jesus? We sing about it all the time. But, but I begin to wonder today whether or not we truly do understand how great it is to have a friend in Jesus. You see, I feel that we don't truly understand how wonderful it is to have a friend in Jesus today. Why, why is it that I say that? You may begin to wonder. Well, oftentimes when we find ourselves struggling, when we find ourselves in our trials, our tribulation, in that fiery furnace that we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, a lot of times we get like how the children of Israel were when they were, quote unquote, trapped at the Red Sea. You see, after they had been freed from the bondage of Egypt, Moses, he had brought the children of Israel to the Red Sea. They were making their way to the promised land. We are making our way to the promised land today as well. I don't know if you know that or not, but we are on a journey to the promised land of the kingdom of heaven, right? And so as they were camping at the Red Sea, Pharaoh, scripture tells us that Pharaoh, he began to regret letting the children of Israel go. And as he began to regret it, Pharaoh, he was filled with all kind of fury and, and anger. And so he desired to, he, de, he decided that he was going to go after the newly freed children of Israel. And that's when he and his chariots, his army, that's when they found them camping at the Red Sea. Israel, they saw Pharaoh, they saw his chariots, and they saw them drawing closer and closer and closer to them. That's when they began to feel like they was trapped at the Red Sea. And, and, and as they were standing and as they was watching Pharaoh drawing closer and closer and closer to them, terror, fear, it began to overcome them. They said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? It's almost as if Israel had already forgotten what God had done for them. It's almost as if Israel had forgotten how the Lord had played the land of Egypt, all of the Egyptians, Pharaoh as well. Why would he have brought them out of the bondage of Egypt for them to die there at the Red Sea. Here we are today. When we are camping at the Red Sea, living our life, trial and tribulation come along the way. We begin to panic, don't we? Here we are again today. Those trials, those tribulations, those afflictions, they begin to mount up. Many of us, we begin to panic, don't we? When things aren't going our way, what do many of us do? We start to worry. When the wicked and the evil, when they surround us, we see that roaring lion, Satan. We see him sitting on the hill and we see his army with him. And we see them trying to encamp all around us. What is it that we begin to do? 
We begin to panic. We begin to fear. We get excited. We, we get anxious. Feeling that they are about to, to ambush us. How soon we forget all that God done brought us through. Many of us, we truly think that God don't care about us. Many of us truly believe that God does not have our best interest in mind. How is that faith? How is that faith? Do you truly believe that the Lord doesn't have your best interest in mind? Do you truly believe that the Lord desires for you to remain as a, a lowly worm in this world today? Do you truly believe that God has left you to be defeated in this world today? Do you, do you believe that the wicked and the evil, that they can overcome you? Do you believe that the wicked and the evil, that they will have victory over you today? Why do we panic? Why do we worry about these things? Here is where I want to remind you all today that God, his thoughts towards you, they are not evil. God's thoughts towards you, they are not evil. God, he does not want you to be destroyed. God's plan, his thoughts towards you, they are again of peace. They are to give you a future and a hope. I often, I often reference that 29th chapter of Jeremiah and that 11th verse because too often many of us, we are, are giving up our hope in the Lord. Believing that the Lord has left us for, for Satan. Believing that God has left us for the enemy, for the adversary, for them to consume us. We must not give up our hope today. See, I repeat this so often today because we must not doubt our friend. Again, I don't know about you all today, but I have a friend in Jesus and I will never doubt him because the Holy Spirit resides within me. Again, I tell you today that hope resides in me and I will never give up my hope in the Lord. Hope is always with me because God is always with me. Do you believe this to be true? In the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the fifth verse, Jesus, he said, bless are the meek. That is the lowly. For they shall inherit the earth is what Jesus said. Again, Jesus said, bless are the meek. That is the lowly. That is us. He said, for they shall inherit the earth. This is a promise that the lowly will inherit a land, not the land in this world today, because this world is going to pass away. But again, as scripture shows us, behold, a new heaven and a new earth will come forth. And that is the land of promise for us. That is the land that the meek, the lowly today, that is the land that we will inherit. Do you believe in this promise? Now, as the children of Israel, as they stood panicking at the Red Sea, Moses, he cried out to them, do not be afraid. And Moses said to them, do not be afraid. He said to them, stand still and see the salvation of our God. See the salvation of the Lord. And guess what God did for them? The Lord, he went before the children of Israel. The Lord, he went before them and he parted the Red Sea. And scripture tells us that the children of Israel, that they crossed on dry ground. 
And then Pharaoh and his army, they decided that they was going to give chase. But again, guess what God did for the children of Israel? Pharaoh and his army, they were crushed. The wicked and the evil, they were defeated. Not by man's hand, but by God's righteous right hand. Do you believe it will be done today? You see, that is evidence of how the Lord will lift up the lowly. God, I tell you today, he has not left you to be defeated. You will not remain lowly. God has promised that there is a land that you will inherit. Do you believe it today? You see, you better believe that the Lord has your best interest in mind. God, he will never let you be destroyed. You better believe it today. You see, a good friend sharpens their friend as iron sharpens iron. And again, we have a good friend in our Lord. A good friend is there to help pick up their friend should they stumble and should they fall down. Do you really think do you really believe that God will allow you to stumble and fall down and remain on the ground? Do you really believe that the Lord desires for you to remain down and that God will not stretch out his hand and lift you up out of the muck and the miry clay and set your feet on solid ground? Do you really believe that God will leave you buried in the mud? see, the wicked and the evil, they want you to think that. They not only want you to think that, the wicked and the evil, they want you to believe that. The wicked and the evil today, they want you to doubt that the Lord loves you. They want you to doubt that God cares for you. No matter how much of a lie it is that God does not care about you, no matter how much of a lie that it is that God does not love you, the wicked and the evil, they love lying. They have no problem with telling another lie. They will repeatedly insist on pushing such a lie, on pushing such a narrative. The reason why is because the wicked and the evil, they want to wear down your faith. Satan, I want you to understand today, Satan wants you to be worn down so that you will give up on God, so that you will give up your hope in the Lord. But again, I say to you today, with the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, there is always hope. There is always hope. You should never give up on God because, again, God will never give up on you. Now, in the day of their exile in Babylon, just to get back over to the response of reading for today. When things couldn't get any worse for the Jews, we'll see that God's word that it came to them there. Again, we'll see there in, in my key verse, we'll see that the Lord, he told Israel, he told them to fear not, is what God said there. He said, fear not, and we'll see there that he promised to help them in what it was that they were dealing with and what it was that they were going th through. God, he promised to help them in their struggles. God, we'll see that in the 15th verse there in my key verse, we'll see that God, he then promised to make them into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. Now that may not mean anything for us today because some of us may not know what a threshing sledge even is. How many of us know what a threshing sledge is? I don't see no hands raised today. See, some of us, we, we may remember the threshing floor from the story of, of Ruth and Boaz. That's, I don't know if y'all remember that Sunday school lesson, but it was on the threshing floor where Ruth, she, she laid claim to Boaz. Now, the threshing floor was a public area 
where grain was thrown down on the ground, sheaves were thrown down and they would thresh the grain, they would thresh the sheaves to, to separate the grain from, from the chaff. And so the threshing sled was the object that they used to, to separate the grain from the chaff. The threshing sledge, it was made of wood that had several slots cut into the wood. Those slots would be filled with stones or, or with iron, and they would be pulled again. That sledge would be pulled over again the sheaves. It would be pulled by oxen or by mules to again tear or to separate the grain from the shaft. So again, here in this figure of speech, I want you to pay close attention there. I want you to notice there that again, Israel, they will go from being the lowly worm that is trodden upon, that is trampled over to again, there being the threshing of sledge that will be doing the trampling. I don't know if you get what that means there today. You see, in this figure of speech here, there is a role reversal for Israel. You see, again, at that period of time, they had masters that were over them. The Babylonians first, then the Persians, they, they came along the way. You see, again, the men of Israel, the, the people of Israel, specifically the Jews there, again, they were nobody in the world. They were irrelevant at that period of time. Again, they were lowly at that period of time. But again, rather than being irrelevant here, God, he is promising here to make them relevant, to make them known in the world there. Rather than being trampled over there, again, I want you to see there that God is promising Israel there that the lowly will become the mighty. Again, my thought for today, the lowly becomes the mighty. Do you believe that that is possible? Do you believe that the lowly in the world today will become the mighty? You see, when God is your friend, yes, he will lift you up from being lowly to being mighty. And I don't know if you hear me here today. You may be in a terrible position today, but the position that you are in, it is not eternal. You may not have good condition today, but again, your condition, it does not define your position in the eyes of the Lord. When God is your friend, the Lord, he will empower you. When God is your friend, he will empower you to overcome the trials, the tribulations, the enemies that you may have, all that is set against you. The Lord, he will empower you to overcome all of it today. You may be the lowly worm today, but tomorrow, tomorrow, you won't be no lowly worm tomorrow. Tomorrow, God said that he is making you into a new threshing of sledge. Look at that scripture there. Those hills and those mountains, those trials, those tribulations in your life. Yeah, they may be obstacles for you today, but tomorrow you won't have to worry about moving them out of the way. Tomorrow you are going to crush those hills. Tomorrow you are going to crush those mountains. I won't get no amen, uh, huh? It's okay. I say, amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I say it. All of those hills and those, those mountains that are in front of me, I can turn around and I can see those hills and those mountains that I've already crushed. Thank you, God. Nobody else will say thank you. I say it. Thank you, God. You see, as the Lord promised to Israel, he promises to you today. He promises that you will winnow, that you will destroy all of the obstacles that are before you. 
Now, it may be hard for some of us to see that today. Because again, we see the wicked, we see the evil. We see them mounting up on their chariots and we see them coming against us. Lies and all, don't we? But again, I tell you today that the wicked and the evil, they will not stand. See, the wicked and the evil, they don't want you to dream such dreams of hope. Satan himself don't want you to believe for one second that you can crush him and his army. But again, what God did for Israel, he will do for us today. As God helped Israel overcome Pharaoh, we can overcome today. As God helped Israel to be able to endure the exile in Babylon, God will help us again endure living in this wicked and this evil world today. Just because, again, you believe you're losing today, I want you to understand today, you're not a loser. Just because you believe you're losing today, don't think for one second you are going to continue to lose. I repeat to you today, don't buy into the lies of the wicked and the evil. In all that we deal with and in all that we go through today, I feel again that we need to be reminded that we shall overcome. And that we used to sing a long, long, long time ago. We shall overcome. Do you believe it today? Amen. We shall overcome all that is against us because of who our faith is in. My faith is not in man. My faith is in the Lord. Amen. And again, I believe in him and his power. I believe in him as a redeemer. I believe in him as one who brings salvation. I believe that he is a deliverer. Amen. Through Israel, the Lord, he promised that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Do you believe it today? God has not given us his only begotten son just for Satan to beat us. He has not given us his only begotten son just for Satan's army and then flesh and blood to destroy us. As John wrote, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Do you believe it? This is the victory, John said, that has overcome the world. Our faith in God's only begotten son. John, he would then ask in his first epistle, the fifth chapter and the fifth verse, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. We must remember that nothing, no wickedness, no evil can keep us from the love of God. It cannot separate us from the Lord, the Lord, our God. I don't care how many men of hatred and wickedness, how many of them rise up in the world and try to keep us from the love of God. They cannot separate us from the Lord, our God. They cannot separate us from his love. They cannot separate us from his blessings. We may be lowly today, but I truly do believe that one day we will be the mighty. You see, I truly do believe and I am confident today that good shall prevail in the end. No matter how much wickedness and evil is in the world today, I truly do believe. And again, I am confident today that good, that we shall overcome. What is it that make me so confident today? God, he has shown us. He has repeatedly shown us that he uses the foolish things of the world to put to shame those who think and believe that they are wise. God, he again has shown us that again, he will use what we think is simple to put to shame the mighty. Again, we have seen it in our summer Sunday school lessons where God, he'll use anybody again, women. He will use them to lead. 
we see where, again, he will use the youth as well to lead as well. We always think about what, what grown men can do. But again, God has shown us that everybody can overcome. Everybody has the strength. Everybody has the power to make it. I believe that good shall prevail because, again, God has shown it. God, he has shown it. He is faithful to what he has promised as well. And so we'll see there as I begin to come to a close there in the 10th verse there. God, he promised to strengthen, to help and to uphold by his righteous right hand. Now, for Israel, it may have taken some time for them to get out of the bondage of Egypt. It may have taken them some time to even return from their exile in Babylon, but they did it. As God promised and as he did for Israel today, I tell you, he will do and continue to do for us today as well. Whatever it is that you have personally gone through in your life, we see it today. We are still standing. Yeah, I don't know what any of you have gone through. I know what I have gone through. I always reference me losing that kidney and how I had to go through the years of dialysis. I am still standing here today, not by my hand, not by my strength, not by my power, but by the hands of my friend the Lord, my God. Again, God has promised us today that we can make it, that we will make it. Jesus said that his friends have peace. And again, we should not let our hearts be troubled. We should not fear. That's what I leave with all of you today. Yes, we live in a wicked world. Yes, we live in a world where the wicked and the evil, where it seems like they are growing. But again, I say to you today, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord our God. As the writer of Hebrews encouraged, I encourage all of you today, let us come together as a great cloud of witnesses and let us lay aside every weight and sin which ensnares us. That is, let us lay aside our fears let us lay aside our worries, our questions, our, our hesitation. Let us stop doubting and let us trust in the will of God. Because again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, by the will of God, we shall prevail. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's message and I hope that you'll share it with someone somewhere. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you like this video, follow the channel as well as hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any notifications so that you don't miss any of the wonderful videos that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.